Okay, so I have some great news for you guys. If you're ever going on a vacation during the school year where you need to go on an airplane and your parents want you to get some of your schoolwork done while you're on the plane before you reach your destination, you now have a reason to tell them no. Well, if they ask you to do your math homework anyway. Because apparently a guy was actually taken off a plane for doing math. Guido Menzio is a professor at the University of Pennsylvania and he was working on some equations when he was boarding his American Airlines flight from Philadelphia to New York. A fellow passenger was curious about what he was doing so the two engaged in a short conversation. A few moments later, the same passenger contacted a flight attendant and claimed he was feeling sick. After additional delays on the tarmac, the plane ended up retiring to the gate. Menzio and the passenger he was talking to were removed from the plane. Apparently this passenger felt threatened because he saw what Menzio was working on. And then he confused the complicated math for some kind of foreign script. This is the same passenger that was asking him earlier about this equation. So either he didn't believe him and thought he was an evil mastermind terrorist, or this guy is just that stupid. But the fact that he was actually removed from the plane just because of one stupid passenger is ridiculous and insulting. Just because he was darker skinned and had an accent, he was actually taken off the plane to be inspected. Obviously, Menzio was able to prove to the authorities that he was just working on math, and then he reboarded the flight and the man who reported him did not. Hello guys, welcome back. I hope your Tuesday has been amazing so far. I'm excited I get to spend some of mine with you guys. Before we get into our stories for today, yesterday I asked you guys what is the most amazing thing you've ever seen and this is what you guys all had to say. Today I want to know what is your favorite school subject and why? Let me know your thoughts down below and your answers might be featured in tomorrow's video. Next, did you guys know that apparently it's actually not safer to constantly be changing your passwords? For as long as I've been creating accounts, I was always told it's a security risk to stick with one password for all of your accounts. Well, apparently Britain's security services are now saying that hackers actually find it easier to hack people who constantly change their passwords. Who knew? Since many password policies insist that we have to keep changing our passwords, most people will usually make their passwords similar to their old ones. And hackers, they're aware of this and they use this as their time to strike. This has in fact been proven true because a recent survey found that two thirds of larger businesses suffered an attack or security breach in the past year alone. Next, there's a new crazy trend that involves people eating corn with an electric drill. It's called the corn drill challenge. Very clever name. And who doesn't want to eat their dinner in like 5 seconds? No surprise, one person tried this viral challenge and it went horribly wrong. In this video we see a girl from China and she's starting to eat the corn and then her hair gets caught in the rotating drill and this drill rips off a large chunk of hair from the top of her head. The corn drill challenge was invented by a vlogger, Eater Yang, whose video has been viewed millions Millions of times. This is super dangerous and when you watch this video, there is no possible way this is a good thing to do to your teeth. I'll leave a video in the description box down below. Next, after 33 years of marriage, Ozzy Osbourne and his wife Sharon Osbourne have split up. The two are currently in their 60s and they met in the early 70s, back when he rose to fame in the band Black Sabbath. The two have three children together and if you're a fan of them or their children, Kelly Osbourne or Jack Osbourne, then you've probably stumbled across their hit MTV reality show, The Osbournes, that aired between 2002 and 2005, but it can still be found online. Even though they are no longer together for a celebrity couple to make it 33 years of marriage, that's pretty impressive. Next, for all of you Game of Thrones fans out there, Saturday Night Live just had an amazing spoof that is perfection. After what felt like decades, the great reveal about the life or death of Jon Snow occurred in the most recent episode. So of course SNL had to perform a small reenactment not only of this episode but basically how the show takes so long to reveal anything. Of course you know the suspense needs to be drawn out for a little while because you know, ratings. But when you're talking about an epic show like Game of Thrones or an important beloved character like Jon Snow, people ain't got time for that. The skit is just hilarious though, any GOT fan will love it. And for anyone who doesn't watch the show, you'll still love it because Kate McKinnon is a comedic god. I shall leave it as always in the description box below. Next I have an incredible story for you guys, apparently it's now been revealed that parts of Mars they aren't actually red. Yes, oddly enough, the red planet, it's not completely red. Parts of Mars are actually blue. New images from NASA's high resolution image science experiment camera that's currently orbiting Mars has revealed that the planet's northwest region is bright blue. The reason behind the unsuspected color is because the Nile phosphate bedrock is exposed with the exception of a few sand dunes. The planet's famous red appearance is due to the red dust which covers the majority of the planet's surface. Next step planned is for the orbiter to inspect the region further in search of any signs that life may have once existed there. Finally, if an apocalypse hits, we now know how to survive. 
thanks to science. Now, may it be from zombies, nuclear war, or an army of evil minions. Uh oh guys, watch out for the minions. We've all thought of how we would survive doomsday. Well now all of our questions they have been answered thanks to scientists from the University of Columbia. They have recently come out with an essay titled How to Survive Doomsday. The author is Michael Han and Daniel Wolf Savin and in this essay the two have mentioned a number of extreme methods for surviving the apocalypse. One of their ideas is to upload ourselves into machines. They said that doing this is no easy feat but we could probably figure it out in the next Next few hundred million years. Great. So, yes, on that uplifting note, that's all the stories I have for you guys today, and I will see you guys tomorrow. Make sure you guys like, subscribe, comment for more videos from around the world, more awesome videos right over here. And as always, you guys can follow me on Instagram at Court McGinley. Bye, guys.